Now, I promise you, if you consider yourself a long-term dividend growth investor, and if you're always on the lookout for the highest quality dividend growth style ETFs across the entire market, I 100% promise you, you are going to want to stick around until the end of this video because we are going to go through what I think might just be the five best dividend growth ETFs across the entire market. And this is after an accumulation of research and investing in the stock market heavily myself for the last seven or eight years. Now we're going to go over all five of these dividend growth style ETFs in detail and towards the end of the video we're even going to figure out which one is best of all or which one has returned the most of all. So if you're a dividend growth style investor and you want to dig into these ETFs with me, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below, subscribe, and let's get right into this one. Real quick for those that haven't already, make sure to go to the first link in my description and grab my new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from $0 invested to now earning over $6,000 on a monthly basis and over $1 million invested in the market. Along with the ebook, you're also going to receive my custom dividend tracker where you can track your dividend progress on an ongoing basis and reach your dividend investing goals. So make sure to grab your a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today it's the first link in my description so the first high quality dividend growth style etf one of my new favorites this is an etf i'm planning on grabbing some shares of very soon here after i finish building my sehd position I'm talking about ticker symbol FDVV or the Fidelity High Dividend ETF. Now this ETF's objective is to provide investment returns that correspond before fees and expenses generally to the performance of the Fidelity High Dividend Index. It normally invests in at least 80% of assets and securities, including the Fidelity High Dividend Index and in depository receipts representing securities included in the index. Now this ETF, although it doesn't really get talked about probably as much as it deserves, this ETF has some amazing performance long-term, which we're gonna look at right here in a second. Now Fidelity High Dividend ETF does have a pretty pricey expense ratio for this style of ETF. It is 0.15%, but honestly, for me personally, I'm pretty numb to expense ratios because I invest into things like JEPQ, JEPI, or even SPYI. Now because of this ETF strategy, as well as the top holdings in this ETF, this ETF is up 14.7% year to date. And as a film in this video, this ETF is up over 16% in the one year. Now what's even crazier, since September of 2016, when this ETF started, it's up over 94% on the max time frame, and that's not even including dividends. Now the main reason I think this ETF is amazing, and one of the main reasons I plan on having this ETF be a portion of my long-term portfolio, is the holding breakdown. I'm a huge fan of the fact that this I'm a huge fan of the fact that this ETF has a good mixture of different things like real estate, but also a ton of technology, a nice mixture of growth and dividend paying names, things like Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, but also names like Philip Morris, All Cheer Group, and PepsiCo. A ton of different names that are going to make this ETF most likely grow over time, but, but also pay investors a ton of dividends along the way. And speaking of dividends, as far as FDVB goes, we're looking at a 2.92% trailing 12 month dividend yield with a negative dividend growth rate so far, at least trailing 12 months, but 11.8% dividend growth rate in the three year and at 2.89% in the five year. So although the dividend growth isn't necessarily superb, this ETF like we saw has grown like crazy over time and offers nearly a 3% starting yield. The next dividend growth ETF name is a very familiar one. This is the position I'm currently building out significantly in my portfolio. I'm up to like 642 shares as of right now. I'm talking about SEHD or the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. Now this ETF's objective is to track as closely as possible before fees and expenses the total return of the Dow Jones US dividend 100 index. Some highlights of SHD is it's tax efficient, it's low cost, which we're going to see here in a second, and it of course can be an entire portfolio or just complement a diversified one. SHD tracks an index focused on quality and sustainability of dividends, which is super important to me because I'm planning on using my dividends to live off of, pay all my bills sometime in the future. And the main reason I'm using SHD as of right now as my long-term foundational position is simply because this ETF, at least long-term, has moved up like crazy as far as price return goes. But not only that, SHD has a high quality basket of holdings, it's only 0.06% expense ratio to own, and on top of that, this ETF pays a nice juicy dividend and has been paying more and more in dividends as time goes on. Now, now the holdings for SHD, there's things like financials, healthcare, consumer defensive, industrials, and energy as the top holding breakdown. And names like Home Depot, Amgem, UPS, which has been beat up like crazy as of recent, BlackRock, AbbVie, etc, etc. Now looking through some of the top names, these names aren't necessarily going to make SHD or any portfolio for that matter necessarily grow super quickly compared to some more technology names. But those names have some significant dividend growth, at least have historically, which gives SHD a 3.49% trillion 12 month dividend. But on top of that, over the last 10 years, SHD has raised their dividend on average 11% per year, which is outstanding. The next super high quality dividend growth ETF, another one of my favorites, another ETF that will definitely find a spot on my portfolio in a large fashion someday soon is DGRO or the iShares Core Dividend Growth ETF. 
Now on the website it says why DGRO, it says DGRO offers low cost exposure to US stocks focused on dividend growth, which if you personally like dividends, I can guarantee you, you like getting paid more and more in dividends year after year. Now it says access companies that have a history of sustained dividend growth that are broadly diversified across industries. Now DGRO in the max time frame has grown like crazy. Since around 10 years ago, this ETF is up 140% plus, not even including dividends, Year over year, it's up around 11.3% and year to date, not bad whatsoever, up over 10%. Now, although a lot of these ETFs do have some crossover, as far as holdings go, DGRO is one of my favorites that we're going to go through all together with names like JP Morgan, ExxonMobil, names like Apple, of course, J&J. There's super familiar names in here that have all been growing over time for the most part, but on top of that, also been paying massive dividends over time and paying more and more in dividends long term, just like the strategy says. Now, DGRO only gives you a 2.29% trillion 12 month dividend yield with around a 10, 8, and 9% dividend growth rate, respectively. I forgot to mention DGRO's expense ratio is just 0.08%, so this one's also very, very cheap to hold on to. Now, the second to last dividend growth style ETF, one of my favorites, if I were to make a list of five, would have to be VYM or the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. Now, VYM's product summary, it says, seeks to track the performance of the FTSC High Dividend Yield Index, which measures the investment return of common stocks of companies characterized by high dividend yields. VYM's expense ratio is just about as cheap as it comes with 0.06%, so that's amazing. VYM is up around 10.9% in the one year, year-to-date up around 9.5%, not bad whatsoever. And since around 2006, this ETF has grown around 142% as far as price return goes alone. Now, as far as holding breakdown, some of the names are going to be, again, very familiar. There's lots of overlap with all these ETFs, which is completely fine. Names like Broadcom, JP Morgan, ExxonMobil, Procter & Gamble, dividend growth names that have been paying dividends and growing for that matter for several, several decades. Now, VYM has a super solid starting yield, around 2.9% trailing 12 months, and around 6, 5, maybe 7% dividend growth as far as year over year. So basically, just like all the other ones, VYM has grown over time as far as ETF price, pays a nice starting dividend, but also has paid more and more in dividends, at least historically. Now, the last dividend growth style ETF, my last favorite on the entire list, and make sure to like this video if you guys like this kind of content, and if you see any dividend growth ETFs on this list that currently are in your portfolio. But the last and final would be DGRW, the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund. Now it says right here why DGRW gain access to the current investment landscape of U.S. large cap dividend growing companies by applying quality and growth screens. And I know I've been saying this for a while, but DGRW is a position I'm really desperately trying to grow out as well throughout my portfolio. There's only so much cash balance to go around. I'm sure you guys feel my pain. But year over year, this one's up around 16%. Year to date, it's up around 13.2%. This is another one that, that offers a nice starting dividend, but also this one has some massive, massive growth potential. This one's up 221%, and this is over the last 11 or so years. Now, the reason being is because, you guessed it, this ETF has the majority of stocks in technology, around 30%. So if you're a long-term investor that wants more exposure, the names like Microsoft and Apple, which just so happen to make up 12 or 13% plus of this entire ETF, but also lots of familiar names like Broadcom, Abbey, J&J, etc. This ETF, honestly, out of all the ETFs, although it has kind of a price expense ratio at 0.28%, this ETF probably has my favorite basket of holdings, especially as a 31-year-old dividend growth investor. Now, one of the negatives I will say, especially for those dividend growth investors out there that want a lot of cash flow a little bit sooner, DGRW has a 1.57% trillion 12-month dividend yield, and I get it, this ETF is going to definitely make up for it, and then some, because again, looking at the price return, this ETF has returned a ton over the past decade. And even though the fact this ETF pays a dividend monthly, which I just so happen to really like, because again, I plan on living off my dividends sometime soon, this ETF's dividend growth isn't necessarily amazing, and the fact that the starting yield is pretty low makes this ETF a little bit lower on the list for me personally as of right now. But again, longer term, this is 100% going to find a position on my portfolio in great quantity. Now, we went through VYM, DGRW, SCHD, FDVV, and DGRO, which I happen to choose as my five favorite dividend growth style ETFs across the entire market. And if we were to look at all these dividend growth style ETFs, compare them side by side, and look at total return or price return plus dividends as the metric. Over the last five years, this is the result if we were to compare all these. DGRW has returned 97.35%. This is in the last five years, which makes it the number one best ETF as far as its time frame. Number two would have to be FDVV with almost 90%. Then number three would have to be SHD. DGRO, and then lastly, VYM. Now, over the last five years, even if you return 61%, I don't think anyone's really going to whine about that. But again, there are certain levels to these different ETFs. And even though they all offer very similar things, there is still some small nuance to each one of them. 
But the great part about that is you have your own portfolio and you can buy every single one of these on their own, or you can even buy all of them. It doesn't really matter. So now that we went through every single one of these dividend growth ETFs, I lastly want to hear from you guys down below. If you were to only be able to buy into one of these forever, for whatever reason, which one would it be? Drop the ticker symbol in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and, and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.